All right, we're going to finish our day with Bible. Um, you should have this worksheet. We're actually going to do both sides because we, we have a really short week and we need to get all our Bible in for the week. So but it's gonna, we're going to combine do uh, today we'll do both sides of this page. Tomorrow's page we'll do both sides of that one too to get it completed for the week. The, the, this week's memory verse actually is really easy. It's a, it's a good one. Um, so uh, repeat after me. A friend loves at all times. Proverbs 17, verse 17a. That was pretty easy. Friend loves at all times. It means a friend, a friend loves you even like sometimes, you know, when you're playing with your friends, sometimes you might not get along or have a disagreement or not, but you still love your friend, even though there's times where you may have uh, disagreements or not agree on something or or fight or argue but it means that you still you still love them at all all the time you still love your friends even though there's times you may not get along so um, since we can't be together to pray I still want to pray with you so I want you to think about something you would like to pray for you know everybody can't you just have to think about God knows what's in your heart what you're thinking about or what you want to pray for and I still want to pray with you. So let's get our hands up. Get ready to do open, shut them. Ready? Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Give them a clap. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Put them on my lap. Your hands should be quiet and on your lap. You can bow your head. Think about what you want to pray for. And I'm going to pray. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we just... Thank you for this day, and we lift up to you, Lord, everything that we are thinking about that we would like to pray for today. Um, we just ask that you bless our families, please bless our pets, and please heal any boo-boos that we may have, Lord, because we always get a lot of boo-boos in our class, so we just ask for your healing touch on those boo-boos. And we just ask that you bless us all with good health and all our family members with good health, and keep all the germs out of our school so that we can come back after Christmas. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. So let's get started with our story about David and Jonathan. I have to read the back to you, of course, you know. So I'm going to have to hold it. Hopefully I can hold it that you can see the picture okay. Um... And I'll do my best to try to hold it still while I read. Look at the picture here. Remember, I don't know if you remember me telling you a little bit. Remember, David was anointed to be king. And who was the mean king that didn't like David? Who was not a good king? Do you remember his name? King Saul. Remember King Saul? He wasn't good. Why wasn't he good? Remember, he didn't obey God. And God didn't like that, so he wanted a new king. And David was good. He was remember he was a shepherd, and remember when um, we learned about him being anointed. So Jonathan, who was I believe is Jonathan in the picture here, Jonathan was King Saul's son, and he was good friends with David. They were very good friends. They love he loved David. Uh, very much. He was a really good friends. And remember, King Saul didn't like David. And what was he trying to do to uh, David? I think I told you a little bit about that. He wanted to kill him. He didn't like him. So he tried to give it. God protected David and he, it didn't happen. So I'm going to read you the story about David and Jonathan. Okay, so look at my picture while I read to you. So King Saul had a son named Jonathan. David and Jonathan became best friends. And one day, Jonathan wanted to show David what a special friend he was. He took off his beautiful coat and belt, and he gave them to David. Jonathan also gave David his sword and bow. As David grew older, King Saul gave him some important jobs to do. He gave David a very important job in his army. This pleased all the people and soldiers, too. One day, David came back from battle in which he had killed some of the Philistine soldiers. Remember, the Philistines are the bad guys. We don't like the Philistines. They're the bad guys. 
So the women came out in the streets and started singing, Saul has killed thousands and David has killed his tens of thousands. What they were really saying was that David was better than the king. And when King Saul heard this, he was so angry and very jealous that he wanted to kill David. So David was better at fighting in the army than King Saul. And he was jealous because David did a better job. So the next day, while David was playing his harp and singing for King Saul, King Saul took his spear and he threw it at David. He missed, but David knew his life was in danger. As the days went by, King Saul tried everything he could think of to kill David. But each time, God helped David escape because God had a special plan for David. So that's why he protected David. So one day, David talked with Jonathan and they came up with a plan. Jonathan would eat dinner with his father to find out if King Saul was going to keep trying to kill David. So afterwards, Jonathan would take a small boy and go to the field to shoot arrows. David would be, be hiding behind a rock. So here in this picture is Jonathan. This is the young boy going out with him, he's practicing. And behind this rock, you can't see him because he's hiding behind it, but David is hiding behind that rock, okay? So if Jonathan shot the arrow and said to the boy, look, the arrows are on the side of you, bring them here, then David would know that all was safe and he could come back to the king's home. But if Jonathan said to the boy, look, the arrows are beyond you, then David would know that King Saul would not rest until David was dead. And David would know that he had to leave the king's home and run away. So at dinner, Jonathan learned that King Saul still wanted to kill David. And when Jonathan and the boy came to the field, Jonathan shot the arrow and said to the boy, isn't that arrow beyond you? Well, now then David knew King Saul would never give up trying to kill him. So Jonathan sent the boy away and David came out of his hiding place. He and Jonathan hugged each other and they cried together because they knew they weren't going to see. They cried because they're such good friends and they knew they weren't going to see each other anymore because David had to leave. He had to leave. So then they made a promise that they would always be friends. They even promised to be friends to each other's children and help them. So later on, actually, you'll later on, David does help actually Jonathan's children. There's a story we'll learn about later on. So they were best of friends. So they cried because they weren't going to get to see each other anymore because they knew that King Saul was not going to give up trying to kill David. And Jonathan was such a good friend to David. He found that out for him and he was sad. But that was really kind of Jonathan because what did he give David? He gave him his sword, his coat. Um, what, what else? Wasn't there something else that he gave him? Um, uh, it, it's, oh, his belt. He had a beautiful belt and a coat and his old sword and his bow. So, wow, he gave him lots of, lots of things shared with his friends. Sometimes we're good friends with somebody. We give them things, huh? Give little gifts to our friends. All right, so you should have this worksheet. All you need is your pencil and write your name. Make sure you get your name written on there. And the directions say, listen as your teacher describes each picture. Number the pictures in the order of each event as each event happened. Okay, so let me find in my book here what it says for me to read. All right, so it says number one. So let's get ready to write number one. Let's see if you know which pictures for number one. Jonathan 
King Saul's son and David were friends. So where does the picture show the two of them being friends? This one. So you're going to write number one right there in that middle picture. Number one in that circle. Okay, number one. Okay, number two. Listen, if you can figure out which picture. While David was playing music for King Saul, the jealous king picked up his spear to throw at David and kill him. So do you see a picture of King Saul with his spear? Right here. So you're going to write number two in that circle. Boy, look at that picture. I'm looking at it. He looks so mean. Doesn't King Saul look so mean? He just was not a nice person, huh? Look at how mean he looks in that picture. It's not good. All right, number three. Look at your picture. See if you can figure out which one's for number three. The spear flew through the air but missed David. So all they show is a picture of the spear. So it doesn't show. That's kind of deceiving because that's just a picture of a spear. It doesn't show it missing David or anything. But this is number three. <laughs> the picture of the spear. So you put number three there. All right. So you have number three written right there with the, the picture with the spear. Number four, David ran away and hid from Saul to protect himself. Where did he hide? Remember, what did he hide behind? Yeah, the rock. See him peeking out there? So you're going to write number four. So he was hiding. Number four. So we've got two left now. Two pictures left. So let's see what comes next. Number five, Jonathan ate a meal with his father, King Saul. He wanted to find out if King Saul was still jealous of David and wanted to kill him. So where are they eating? Right there. So you will put number five there where they're eating the meal. And number six, of course, you know, is the last one. I'm going to read it to you still, though. You know, that's number six. So you have five and six. But let me read number six to you. I didn't read it yet. Jonathan shot arrows with a boy to let David know that King Saul was still angry. David should not come back to the palace because King Saul still wanted to kill David. So there's his bow and his arrows. So it should be number six. All right. Turn your page over. This just is, we would be talking about just about being good friends and, and looking at the pictures and deciding what is being a good friend. So it says circle the pictures that represent a good friend. So let's look at picture number one. Picture number one says two boys who are upset with each other. Looks like they weren't. Look at their faces. It doesn't look like they were really getting along or they're upset. So maybe somebody wanted to play cars and somebody wanted to play dinosaurs and they couldn't agree on what, so they're mad at each other, huh? So is that showing that, it, that they're being good friends? No. So you do not circle. Just let that picture be. Let's look at number two down here in the green. That one looks a little better. It says... Uh, two boys who are happy to be friends. Looks like they're hugging them, kind of hugging each other, arm hugging each other. Are they happy to be friends? Yes. Is that being showing you being a good friend? Yes. So you're going to circle. I can get this. Circle that picture. Circle that picture. You can just use your pencil. All right. Let's look at number three. Number three is up here. Let's look at this picture. The girls. Number three says two girls playing together. Do they look like they're playing nice? Yep, it looks they look happy. They looks like they're sharing, huh? Looks like they're playing nice. So you will circle that picture, number three. Two girls that are playing together, nice. Uh oh, look like secrets down here. Let's look at number four. What are they doing? Let me see what it says in my. It says two girls telling secrets about another friend is that being a good friend telling secrets 
And it looks like that little boy's trying to listen to see who are they talking about. But you shouldn't be telling secrets like that about friends. That's not being very nice because it hurts people's feelings. Because they're wondering, okay, he's probably wondering what mean things are they saying or what unkind things are they saying about me. So you shouldn't be telling secrets like that about someone because it hurts their feelings. So they're definitely not being good friends to him. No, no, no. Let's look at number five. It says two boys who are angry with each other. Oh my goodness, what are, does it look like they're doing in this picture? They got their hands around their neck, like they're like trying to choke each other. Should you put your hands around someone's neck? No, absolutely not. They are being really bad. Shame on them. So you don't want to, when you're angry, you don't want to put your hands on anybody and hurt them. If someone gets you upset, you need to tell them how you're feeling and use your words. And absolutely not. If I caught any of you doing something like that, and you would probably, probably wouldn't even get a yellow light. You would go straight to red because we do not put our hands on other people's necks. Put your hands on people like that. So absolutely not. Shame on them. They're not being very good. All right, let's look at number six now. Number six. A group of friends sharing God's word with one another. So what are they reading? If they're sharing God's word, well, they're the Bible, huh? And they look happy because they're talking about Jesus and sharing God's word and talking about the Bible. So you definitely want to circle that picture. They These kids need to go teach these two boys some things, huh? How to be kind because God is definitely not happy with seeing that. God does not want us to be putting our hands on one another and hurting people. You, absolutely not. Not allowed. All right. Well, this concludes our first day of remote learning. Let's give yourself a clap. I think you did, all did probably great. Hopefully you were all able to understand everything I did. And I will see you tomorrow for uh, opening. We'll do our pledges in our calendar again. So... Have a great day and I will see you tomorrow.